What features is the cyber cab going to have? Oh my gosh, so many, but uh, there's a lot that keep popping up. I don't know where they came from. And some of these rumor starters uh, could use a good slap in. Uh, we'll find out which ones those are in just a second. I'm going to be joined today by uh, Bert, former uh, auto engineer. Ken, former auto engineer. If you need to know more about who they are, go back to part one, where I tell you to go back to other videos and find out more. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So there's some impossible tech. There's some things that I keep hearing that it's definitely gonna have, it's definitely gonna have. So let's start with airless tires. I don't know who started this rumor and I don't know why. You know, Goodyear, um, I don't know if you were, did they have them at the auto show? I don't remember if they had them at the Detroit auto show, but you've seen airless tires at every show for how many decades? <laughs> They always show those off. You've seen, I've seen yeah, booths. Yeah, in the, you know, pictures on the magazines, they, they always say that it's coming, and it's still coming. <laughs> and it's still coming. Elon was asked in an interview on Joe Rogan, why, why don't they? And he said, physics. Just, it's physics. Now, there are companies that make airless tires, but not for highway speeds. And can you share any of the problems that airless has, either of you? Not smooth. Not it is. Absorbed. It is not can't, smooth. Can't, can't, can't to absorb the, the bumps and stuff. Not yeah. not like a nice cushy, right. air filled piece of rubber and steel. They work well on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not a lot of air, so that's true. Yeah. So yeah, I think that if you make it soft enough to be able to absorb the uh, bumps in the road, then it's going to be coming apart over time, it's not going to take the wear that a regular tire can do and won't have the um, longevity. Yeah. The ones we've seen are all tire wheel systems. Yes. So when you need to replace a tire, you need to replace the entire wheel. That's expensive. I don't think popped tires is a big deal. I think the taxi would pull over bring you another taxi to get into and have Optimus or, or a human just fix it, tow it, whatever. It's not a big concern. It's not a big expense. And traditional tires are very cheap. I wanted to ask your opinion. What, uh, the, what we saw was 20 inch wheels on the back, 18s on the front. What size tires and what size wheels do you think the finished one will have? Do you think? I would think they would be uh, smaller. Uh, yeah. Than, yeah. Smaller. And, and why? Because it's expense. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. It's less expensive. It will get better range uh, for better ride. Better, better, better ride, ride, better range, cheaper tires, Absolutely. cheaper wheels. Who cares about the looks of it? I mean, it's people a, always say the bigger the wheel, the bigger the tire, the better it looks in the. Oh, but does it really does that really matter in to a cyber camp? Yeah, we're over that. Well, I would take your bus line, but that bus line looks cooler. Come on, it comes down to money, <laughs> right? I mean, it, com it comes down well, to the ticket price. To for it? Yeah, ticket price. Yeah, uh, so that's so we've got the, that covered. Another one I keep seeing is hubless uh, or hub motors. It's going to have hub motors. Why on earth? First of all, can you think of any reason why someone would believe this? Have we seen anything that would indicate? No. Nothing. Are there any production vehicles that have hub motors? Aptera abandoned theirs. Okay. Oh yeah, they are not, they've gone back inside. Right. I saw some prototypes. Of, you know, uh, what is that other, that, that truck that no longer is? Lordstown. Yeah, Lordstown. Yeah, uh, That's right. And they never made it to market. Made it. Yeah. There are problems mm -hmm. and what and no benefits in this case to well, move. We have it. the technology right now. So keep going with the, the current technology because you know they have all that experience. Why wait for the impossible? Mm -hmm. Speaking of impossible, I hear it's going to have FSD. <laughs> okay, so that's the one thing that today is impossible. But let's not count on five moonshots. Let's just get one. 
And that's one that Tesla has a path to. Tesla does not have a path to airless tires or hub motors. I don't see an advantage to it. Um, another one is people are saying it can't be inductive. And can you know that I was in that camp until a few months ago when you shared some papers with me about the high efficiency. The high efficiency. And I don't know if you noticed, but the one that you sent me looks an awful lot like the one Tesla unveiled. Ooh. Did you not know that? I did not know that. Oh yeah, it's got the same funky star pattern. What a coincidence. So I don't know if they bought the company or licensed the tech or whatever, but with the with the quantity I suspect they plan to procure, a very small licensing fee would be a lot of money. Can inductive work? Let's start with uh, the speed. Oh, absolutely, yeah. In fact, it's very efficient, and, and when you use the high frequency inductive uh, charging that, that they have the specs already made for, right? And all those specs are done. It can do, it can do high, high power, and, uh, and that would be your speed, you know, yep. being able to charge it very quickly. And minimal loss. Mm -hmm. So what we were seeing on the papers that I saw, 92 to 95% efficiency. It just gets better. Yeah. And your wired charger is only 97-ish. So it's, a, it's not a stone's throw. It's right there. It's right at the gate. Uh, and then in terms of the power, well, what if you can only put 100 kilowatts through it? That'd probably be enough for you know, yeah. short ranges again. Yeah. Also, there's times when you don't need the robo taxi. So, you know, in the morning you need it. And when everyone goes home, you need it. But in the middle, you may not need it. You may not need it. Why would you need? Why would you need a huge battery or lightning fast charging? So to that I say, if you've got a location that currently supports enough power for eight 250 kilowatt chargers, you can now put in. 15 or 20 inductive chargers and without oh, upgrading your, bit. yeah, without sure. upgrading yeah. your transformer. So, in, and in terms of the time, you know, well, these will be stolen. These will be abused. <laughs> Wouldn't you just put them somewhere else? Maybe in concrete? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you could, but that's expensive. You could just slap the pads down inside of a no humans allowed building. Oh, true. Yeah. The depot doesn't, it doesn't need to be convenient in a, a sense that you and I think of it. It needs to be convenient to a machine. You know, the mechanical room of a building is never convenient to us, but it's there for a reason. And they keep it out of the way for a reason. They don't need space between vehicles either. You, well, so someone else pointed out that when you do a rental car return, what you do is you drive along uh, in just a row of cars. It's just a, a dead end row of cars. And the chargers could be lined up along there at spaced intervals, and they could just inch forward as the next one needs to be deployed, and you can get however much charge you need. Or while cleaning. Or while cleaning. So let's talk about let's talk about while cleaning. That robot we saw, that's just a regular industrial three axis. Yeah, right? Not impossible, not terribly expensive. That's like a $25,000 ish bot, I think. It's not, you think more? <laughs> How, yeah, what do you think, 50? Uh, well. Because it doesn't need to bear much weight. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm used to the robots being 100,000 okay. kind of stuff. So that $100,000 robot can work 24 seven. Yes. And it can replace four humans who made 25,000 and break even in a year. Okay, so even if they're a hundred thousand, and they're and they somehow are no more sophisticated than the one we saw, yeah. because all it needs is really three attachments. Would you say the buffer, the vacuum, and the scrubber? Maybe a, a UV light or something. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep that attached all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be oh, yeah on the arm. <laughs> yeah, on the arm. So that that is not impossible. Are there any other impossible things that uh, you've you, you've heard of for it? That uh, I mean, obviously the meat-driven part, not a fan. Uh, I don't think that part is impossible. I mean, uh, for this vehicle. Oh, let's just cover real quick. Two seats is not enough. It can if I've got if the three of us want to go somewhere, 
How am I supposed to hail a vehicle? Oh, we just get two. <laughs> or? Or you order a Model Y. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, but how many of those have they made? <laughs> <laughs> Millions. They, so they've made, we now know, a million of them just in GA4, the tent. <laughs> so that's that's exciting. I'm excited about that. Uh, is there anything else that's that you've seen that you that people think the car will be, and you just scratch your head? Oh, another one I saw was oh it'll have air suspension so it's up easier to get in and out, but I don't see the room in the fenders and uh, and quarter panels to put any throw, any any range of motion. Yeah, and I think that that's the money part of it. That cyber cab is going to want to be inexpensive and easy to build, and I think the complexity of uh, the, yeah, the be maintenance, the, it, you know, yeah, because they fail, yeah. they would fail. And this has just nothing but simplicity built into it at every step. Absolutely. And the uh, let's talk about the mobility real quick. You had a chance to see it. That door hole is ginormous. The seat is a bit low. But it's not that much. I mean, is it lower than this couch? I don't think so, no. So if someone's mobility would permit them to sit on this couch, why could, I mean, they could get in it. And there's that big opening. So I know some people had some issues with uh, mobility, but they're able just to slide in. Yeah, just turn, sit, pull your legs in. So, you, so would it be fair in your assessment to say that the fact that it's low is offset by the size of the door opening. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and I think, again, if you if mobility is your concern, if you need to bring your mobility device, your scooter, your chair, get an S or get an X, like they have at the Boring Tunnel. At the Boring Tunnel, there are Xs that have a rack on the back. And I think all of that would work. Uh, what else? What else is impossible, you guys? Uh, I want to thank uh, Ken and Bert for hanging out with me. Uh, I think I'm going to cut them loose. I think I've been taking up enough of their time. And yeah, the general complaints, I think we've gone through enough of those. Actually, you know what? Bonus time, we'll do one more. Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. One wheel drive. <laughs> one wheel drive. Which one? One of the rears. One wheel drive. Okay, I'm going to disagree on that one, but let's hear what Bert has to say. <laughs> no, um... Do you think it needs all wheel drive? No. I don't think it does either. No. With That's traction fine. control, Mark from the Tesla Life Show uh, took his rear wheel drive Model 3 out in the snow, the first snowfall when he bought it, and said, well, let's tear it up, let's hit this parking lot, and I can't break traction. <laughs> uh, and this was fresh, wet, slippery kind of snow. So if it's gonna be two wheel drive, and I agree with you, because you don't need that kind of performance, front or rear? Or does it matter? I think it's wherever they've got the space. I, th I think that if the drive characteristics are different, and personally, I think I would prefer the rear. Um, Is it more comp? Well, that's right, my because, because then you have just the steering mechanism up front, and then and the just the drive in the, back. in the back. Is it is it substantially more complicated to make the front wheel drive like on a Honda Accord, like I had? Well, where it turns and powers. My experience is in the snow, when you're doing front wheel drive, it's very possible for you to try to start up a hill, like from a parking area, and the car wants to slide oh. down, and you can't. Where oh. the rear wheel drive, I don't believe you have that. The I motor... think front wheel drive has more difficulty with going the direction that you want it to go in icy conditions. Okay. and and. I did get comments, people saying with front wheel drive, you get torque steering, but that's only under power. And I mean a bit of it. We're not going to be under that kind of power. So I think that it, I don't see a reason a motor this small couldn't be wherever they'd like it. Right. It looks like there's sufficient room under where you would normally have a sub trunk, but it doesn't need a sub trunk, but all that space is, is available. Does it need a bigger battery? No, no, I, I agree with you. I had someone say, uh, 200 miles, you'll never do intercity driving. And I pointed out, you've never been on a Greyhound, have you? How often does a Greyhound stop? 
about every two hours because someone needs the bathroom, someone needs mm -hmm. to stretch, someone needs to smoke or do whatever they do. So it's, it would not be crazy to do a road trip where every two hours you get out, stretch your legs, and the Greyhounds will stop for like 10, 20 minutes, probably more like 15 or 20, and it's also the break time for the driver. So what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it into them comments. If you've got a good comment, I will try and get it back to these gentlemen, or uh, maybe I won't. Who knows? I, I'm, I can be dastardly at times. Everybody else, like, subscribe, do what you do, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots while you're cruising around in a robo-taxi of your own. Thank you, guys. That's what they're going to put in the cargo. A urinal. <laughs> <laughs> See, what Ken doesn't know is I haven't hit stop. <laughs>